and wood rather. Hello, and welcome to the ninth episode of the Series Editor Tutorial Series. The series which no longer guarantees any episode releases on a regular interval, but just does it whenever it feels like doing a new episode. In this episode I'm going to be covering the Destruction Editor. Uh, I've recently been asked a question by a YouTuber, Sharp Dressed Man, who uh, wanted to know how to use explosive barrels to, so you can shoot at them and they'll blow up and you'll get damage and there's an explosion effect and it's very nice. And so, in this episode I'm going to be using this explosive barrel, this very primitive explosive barrel model, which I made for one of my, uh, for one of my previous mods. I'm going to be trying to recreate the explosion effect for the purpose of this tutorial, and as you'll follow along, you'll hopefully understand how to set up your own destruction setting. Okay, so first things first, before we get into anything. In order for your model to be destructible in the first place, it needs to be a static model. As you'll see here, this barrel here is a static model. Well, this one here is a simple model. If I now go into the simulation, and try to blow up this barrel. All of them blow up except this one. Because this model is a simple model. It is not configured for, for being able to be destroyed. I've covered why static models work like this in a previous episode. But that is that is the essence of it. It needs to be a static model for it to be destructible. And an easy way to make your simple model a static model is to go to the entity list. Look up the static model entity that is in the geometry tab. And then click this icon here that says convert selected entities. Click yes. And now what the editor will do is it will, it will look for similar entity properties. And then convert those to the static model. So if I do the same for this one. Go into simulation again. Then it will blow up. So make sure, so I think you get the point. Make sure your entity is a static model. Alright, let's get into the actual destruction now. Select your entity and under the model entities, make sure you have a destruction holder. If you select destructions here and then none, new and then C destruction holder. If you don't do this, you won't be able to go anywhere, so it's important you have one of those. Now, when you select the entity again and click here on the world editor and then switch to the destruction editor. And now you'll have your explosive barrel is gone, there's only a gray out outline. Uh, here that's that's intentional that's we're on the right track there all right now we're going to slowly build up our destruction the first thing we should do is make sure that you can see these two tabs here config and holder if you don't see those go to the view tab here and make sure these two are are green make sure you can select them like this all right then go to the holder tab and now we have two options here configs and destruction settings configs are the effects that occur when the destruction settings are met basically with the destruction settings, we can set what is needed for our destruction to be triggered. So let's go to that first. So go to destruction settings, new, and then see destruction settings. Collapse this. And we have four options here. Player data, puppet data, generic data, and data. So you're probably wondering, what do all these datas mean? When you shoot a model, it looks for these three data fields and compares the damage given as well as the damage type. Let's go to generic data first. Click this yellow plus icon, and this is we're now, we're now going to set up a prerequisite for the destruction to be triggered. Let's go over these. First, we have damage type, and if you collapse this, you have a lot of options. Every weapon, uh, from both the player weapons as well as the the enemy's weapons, have a specific damage type. Like for example. Uh, bullets, that is the, the, the Colts, or the Tommy Gun, the Minigun, the Assault Rifle. Burning is the Flamethrower. Plasma is the Laser Rifle. Impact is the Rocket Launcher. Cut is the Knife. Sawing is the Chainsaw. You get the, you get the gist of it. So if you only want the... Let's say for example we only want this, uh, this, this barrel to be destroyed by a Rocket Launcher. So we select Impact. By the way, this is the direct hit of the Impact. If you're looking for the radius of the Impact, uh, the, the radius damage of the rocket launcher, that is the explosion damage type, but let's keep it at impact. And accumulated damage, that is how much damage you need to do in order to trigger the destruction. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe one uh, serious MHD rocket does 100 damage. So let's say 100. 
Again though, this is only for generic damage types. If, for example, I wanted the uh, barrel to be only destroyed by the player's rocket launcher, I would go to player data, add an element, then in category, I would the weapon category, I would type in rocket launcher and accumulated damage set it to 100 again. And then I no longer need this one because I have specified it to be specifically destroyed by the player's rocket launcher. I would click on the category here and then remove elements. And you can do the same for the puppet data as well, but we're not going to stretch this out. Now, if we test this out, it doesn't get blown up. Why is that? Yeah, very simple actually. It's because we haven't specified a destruction config, and that specifies what will happen when the destruction settings, or the, rather the prerequisites, for the destruction are met. So we're going to be covering that next. So let's add in a new configuration. Alright, so here we have uh, a lot of fields, but really only one of these is very relevant as of right now, and that is the effects category. So let's add in another element under effects. And this is where we will specify the explosion, the sound, the light flash, the whatever you want to do with it. For every uh, destruction effect you can set a name, although this isn't really necessary, it's just for uh, your convenience. Right now the most important one is effect. If you click on the plus icon here, you, you have all the options for a destruction effect. Let's just begin at the very basics of it and let's add in a particles. And we're, what we're going to add in here is a explosion particle. Go to weighted effects, click this yellow plus icon, and then under effects you will browse to the explosion effect that you wish to use. I've already navigated to the generic explosion effect used in the game. It's right here in this folder if you want to find it, and then explosion pfx. And now you've selected that one, so now when the barrel is blown up it should have this explosion appear. Let's test that out right now. Alright, get the rocket launcher. Okay, so the barrel is gone. It was kind of hard to see, but because I uh, the, the effects from the rocket launcher itself is appearing over it. But there was a second explosion here, so that means we've successfully configured that um, explosion effect for the barrel. So another important thing uh, that is related to the destructions. If, for example, you want the explosion to appear at a, uh, if you have a very large model, maybe you want multiple explosions to appear at multiple locations. If you want to inv individually set the placements for every explosion, we would use the, the distribution field. So in here you can set uh, the placement of it, and then go to V, and that's the vector. And like if I wanted this to be high up, I would set the I value to 5. We're not going to do that right now because that makes no sense with our very tiny model. We have also several distribution settings, but we're going to cover that a little later on. Right now, we're going to create a second effect. A nifty tool that you could use if you're creating a lot of similar uh, effects, but in slightly different places, like if you have a very large model. You would use the clone element tool, that is this uh, icon with the green square and the orange square. If you click on that one, it will copy over the effect that you have currently selected and recreate it with the exact uh, same parameters into a new effect. So again, it will be very useful for if you want to create the multiple effects same times but in different places. Right now that's not very useful for us though because we're going to creating an entirely new effect. So click the create icon and then sound. And you will see here that a static sound entity has appeared and you'll also have here a the properties that are similar to the static sound entity. So I think most of these settings are self-explanatory. Uh, cone angle would be the direction. Uh, you should just keep it at 360 to 60 and it will go and the sound will travel in every direction then. Let's just select a sound. I've already navigated to a uh, sound uh, file. Let's pick this one. A reminder that you can preview sound files or texture files or any kind of file like this by hovering over it and holding down the F3 button. Very useful. Alright, let's just pick that one. Alright, and let's try that out now. Boom! Alright, one more effect to recreate and that is the brief light flash that happens when we blow up the barrel. That is the fast light effect. Alright, let's select that and now go to fast light perhaps and you'll have quite a few options here. Right now three are important. Color, this one, fall off and animation duration. Let's begin with color. With color we can obviously 
change the color for our fast light. However, it's, we can we cannot just set it to one color. We can use multiple colors. We can use a gradient. This thing is a gradient right here. So if I right click this bar in the gradient and then pick color, we can change the color at which it begins. I don't want to be too bright, so let's set this to RGB 50. And now right click anywhere else in the bar and insert keyframe. And now we're going to drag this bar all the way to the end. Just left click it and drag it. And then right click it again, pick color. And I'm going to set it to fully black. It's kind of hard to notice, but you'll see here the gradient goes from a gray to a dark, uh, a darker gray. The darker your fast light color is, the less visible it becomes. All right, now we're going to go to the fall off. That's basically the radius at which um, your explosion happens. Again, this is purely something you have to toy around with. Tweak it, see, see what works best for you. I'm going to set it to 8. I think that works for my case. And then finally, the animation duration, which is how long the uh, how long it will take for the color to go from the beginning to the to the end of the gradient. So I'm just going to set it to 0 0.5 or something. I think that's fair. All right, let's try this out. All right, there we go. You can see the light flash on the ground here. So now we've basically created a little uh, explosive barrel effect, or have we? You'll notice now I shot these barrels, but I got damage. So how are we going? So now we're going to set up uh, how to damage the player when a model is destroyed. You'll want to go back into the destruction editor, but we're not going into the configs this time. We're going back to the destruction settings, and at the very bottom you'll have the data field here. Click this yellow plus icon to create the model destruction data, and this is where we set the damage for our barrel. All right, so the body type is uh, not really that relevant. Uh, what's important here is the range damage as well as the force impulse and the range damage. So basically the range damage is obviously how much damage it would deal at maximum values. Uh, the force impulse is how far it would push you. Uh, so 2000, that was the default for these. I'm going to increase it to 5000 for this one. And the range damage is uh, basically the radius for in which it deals damage. At the hot spots right here, it will deal full damage, so it will deal 50 damage. And then it would go from uh, 50 damage at uh, 4, and from 0 damage at 16. And anywhere in between it would deal anywhere between 50 damage and 0 damage. I'm going to increase the fall off of this, and let's see how that works. All right, as you can see, it uh, pushed us back by quite a margin. We got plenty of damage, and it even destroyed those barrels in the back here, which is kind of—it makes sense when you think of it. But anyway, that's uh, that's how you create a simple explosive barrel effect. There's still a few things about the destruction editor I would like to cover that are not really relevant to the uh, explosive barrel in particular, but I'm going to cover those now because I think they're pretty important. And for this, I've opened up one of the default Serious Sam Tree levels. I'm going to select this pillar here and go into its Destruction Editor. And you can see that they have a lot of effects, but also the Substitute field. So what does a Substitute do? Well, I'm going to demonstrate that. Alright, so if I destroy this, um, this pillar, you'll have the Destruction uh, effects as usual, but also it leaves behind this underlying pillar. So that is basically what a substitute is. When you destroy a model, you can have another model take its place. And that other model, in turn, has its own destruction settings with maybe the same, but less uh, less debris or something. And if I destroy this again, it'll have the same, but less debris. And then after that, it will leave behind this base that I... This uh, pillar base that I can't destroy anymore. It's pointless. But as you can, that is basically what the uh, point of the substitute is. You can make layered destructions, and as in the editor, that's called a cascaded destruction. Now I'm going to cover one last um, destruction effect that's actually quite commonly used. Okay, and this would be the debris effect. You can see here all these little uh, wood wood uh, models. They all have. Their individual geometry and collision, they're actually fully, they're not they're not textures, they're not 2D textures, they are full 3D models. And how can we achieve this kind of uh, effect with the debris effects right here? So basically the, the gist of the debris effect is that um, 
it will create a lot of uh, s small uh, debris models in a particular arrangement that is calculated by the editor. And it will assign each of them a random stretch, a random velocity, a random uh, lifetime. Uh, lifetime is basically how long it stays there before it's deleted by the, by the engine. So how do we do this? Well, you, can, uh, you have to use a model that has a, that has a custom mechanism. Now, I I've just used it a default one here from a serious entry, but how to set up one yourself is a completely different uh, topic and I'm going, not going to cover that in the episode because it would extend it by another 10 minutes I think. But basically you, if you want to have a uh, debris model here you should use one that has a, uh, a debris in, in the name somewhere. Because that, then most likely it will have a collision that is properly set up for this purpose. And then with here you can change the ra random stretch rails that is basically uh, it will have a stretch anywhere between 2 and 4 the editor will randomly calculate that uh, the velocity uh, is, the is the same gist and then disturb velocity you can it, w it will also generate a random direction in which it will travel but you can set limits to that with uh, again uh, this one uh, heading pitch and bank and the lifetime which I've already said is how long it's is how long it stays in the uh, game so how do we uh, decide where these uh, debris are allowed to be rendered? Well, we're going back to the distribution uh, here. As you can see, I've, the distribution isn't normal distribution. This time it's a box distribution. You can change that here. So basically, in this box distribution, you can set up a 3D vector. And it will put those all these little debris uh, in, in the box distribution. So I've created the box here that is 10 by 1 by 10. And then there are 30 count of placement so there are 30 individual debris models in there it will put them at random positions and then for each of those random positions it will create a velocity a stretch a lifetime i think you get the gist by now all right and that is it for the destruction tutorial i hope i've uh, covered the most important aspects and again there are still a lot of there's still a lot of effects that I haven't covered. There's uh, decals, there's, uh, the blood spray, that's when it's quite commonly used for enemies. Uh, a shaker for when you want like a, maybe maybe a huge explosion that uh, shakes the screen around. Maybe even a script if you want something special to happen, but that's quite advanced stuff. You should just experiment with that yourself. The best way to learn the editor in my experience is just trial and error. You just gotta try things. You gotta look at uh, look at settings that you've never seen before like oh what does this do and you just gotta try it these tutorials they're just here to give you a head start on that really you'll you will learn you'll learn most of it by yourself anyway I hope you've uh, enjoyed the tutorial again if you have any requests for a future tutorial you can uh, write a comment I'll get onto that and hopefully somewhere in the future I'll get to that uh, custom collision tutorial but anyway that's it for today thank you for watching and uh, have a nice day.